everything is about a budgeting process. Mm -hmm. And just the way you budget for a company, you should also budget for your own finances. Always try and keep your money in something that earns it money. Let me tell you, money will always find a use for itself. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. money is money. Mm -hmm. It's just about the discipline. Hey everybody, welcome back to Financially Incorrect. I am your host, Barack. And remember, as usual, this podcast is proudly sponsored by FX Pesa. If you'd like to learn about trading, if you'd like to um, open up a trading account, please check out the links in the description box. Um, they do offer um, also trading classes at all of their locations. So if you check up any FX Pesa office, you'd be able to go and understand and learn a bit more about trading. Um, this month is a very special month for me personally. Um, this month of April, for those who don't know, is Autism Awareness Month. Personally, I am affected, well, not affected per se, but I have a nephew um, who is autistic. Um, and as a family, we've had to deal with understanding what autism is. We've had to deal with um, yeah, understanding how to you know, properly give care for a child who's autistic and begin to map out a life for them. Um, last week, actually over the Easter break, my family and I climbed Mount Kenya to Point Lenana, um, sort of to try and raise awareness for autism. And the climb to Mount Kenya was sort of symbolizing just how difficult and challenging it can be for caregivers um, around autism. So we're going to be talking a bit more about that throughout the month, this month of April. But just, I guess, just to start us off, just for you guys to be aware, it is Autism Awareness Month. Autism is a condition that affects a child development um, process and their brain work a bit differently. The way that they learn, some of them can be verbal or nonverbal, among other things. But yeah, so this is just like a teaser to just say, be aware that Autism Awareness Month um, for people. And, and if you know someone who's a caregiver or a parent who's going through autism um, or taking care of a child who has autism, I can assure you it's not simple. I watched my twin brother um, turn into a superhero parent um, taking care of my nephew when he has episodes and things like that, and it's definitely not easy. So if you know someone who's there um, who's dealing with a child who has autism or a caregiver who gives, someone who gives care to people who have autism, please give them a shout out because it is not easy. Today, I have with me Joffrey Odundo, very, I don't know now whether I say that you're, you're retired, you're official. <laughs> Semi-retired. Semi-retired. <laughs> uh, the former CEO of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Um, I think we're going to have a really, really fascinating conversation, but welcome to Financial Incorrect. Thank, Thank you. you for gracing us. Interesting, yeah. very interesting. This is the th third time that we've tried to do this, so it's like three times the yeah. charm now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. It's, yeah? it's, uh, it's, it's, Thanks for coming. Thank you. So I'll kick off this interview with how literally our conversation started. So I walked in here, and everybody who watches Financially Incorrect will see me today in like a suit and tucked in um, 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 pants. I'm even calling it a suit, like a shirt and tucked in <laughs> pants. And it's very formal. So I walk in, and Geoffrey's like... Um, um, I can see like you're, you're casual and I was like, what do you mean? This is, this is very formal for me. And he said, this is formal for you. And I said, yeah. And so he was talking about how this for him is casual, what he's dressed in is casual. And I am just absolutely fascinated yeah. by, by, I guess the fact that you consider this casual. Mm. So, I mean, at what point did you feel like it was ingrained into you that, um, uh, wearing uh, a suit and tie is what is formal, and this is considered casual. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Barack. In fact, yeah. um, uh, I like I like that's a good way to start this. Yeah. So, uh, for thirty one years, I mentioned to you, I was in the financial services sector. Yeah. And my first job uh, was an uh, uh, insurance underwriter, uh, and it was just about formal dressing, mm -hmm. more very European uh, kind of uh, uh, dressing then. And that went on, even as I went to the I transition to the investment banking mm -hmm. side, the trading side, and ultimately the NSC. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never gone to work without a tie. Yeah. In fact, I have a lot of ties. I could donate them out, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've tried different types of ties, the yeah. wide ones, the slim ones, yeah. and, and everything. Yeah, so it was more of the, um, the culture then, yeah. uh, which I've seen totally transformed mm -hmm. uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. um, my first interaction with a non-tie environment was at the NSC. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I found a, a very informal dress dress code, but but I still had to go. I still found myself continuing to wear ties. Yeah. Uh, but I introduced uh, we introduced um, a semi sort of formal dressing. Okay. Where once a week you could actually go in fully, fully jeans. Jeans and, and a t-shirt. But no t-shirts. Oh, no t-shirts. No t-shirts. No, no. <laughs> Even if it's a t-shirt, it does have a collar. Oh wow. <laughs> 
Wow. So it's, um, should I say it's more of the um, historical background that mm-hmm. we all came from? Mm-hmm. Uh, the culture has changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. I think uh, with all this tech environment coming mm-hmm. in and we see all these American, this actually is an American way of dressing. Right. Yeah, where it's very, in this informal way. Right. It's, it's really gaining currency. And um, yeah, so, so that's the background. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, for you, do you think there's a direct correlation between um, the way that you dress and mm. your career um, and the way people perceive you? Mm. Or, and even more directly, a correlation between dressing and money? All right. Yeah. Well, I think um, the dressing actually sort of, I think, you know, reflects a little bit of a seriousness, right? Uh-huh. Um, if you go for a formal meeting uh-huh. with the CEO uh-huh. uh, appearing in a T-shirt, uh-huh. uh, they'll never take you seriously. Yeah. Uh, they want to see some formal... It's like a culture. It's like a, you know, um, sort of a statement. They make a statement that actually you've taken that meeting seriously yeah. or that appointment seriously. Yeah. Uh, and so you'll slowly see that, um, that, that being the trend. But what I've seen more recently is that... Um, it's it's kind of wearing off. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, today most corporates are informal. Um, most uh, uh, organizations have actually adapted it. Even government, mm-hmm. government actually, there's a lot of informality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they like uh, the African culture of dressing. Yeah. So I think it's becoming the trend is changing. Yeah. Uh, it's coming moving away from that stiffness to a bit more flexibility. Yeah. Uh, but what I've seen again is that um, the people with money, yeah, are very informal. I mean, they, they dress very informally. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I meet my key investors, they're not in ties and suits. Right. Um, it reflects that you've arrived, you know, in a way. So <laughs> <laughs> you can tell somebody is still in the hustle and yeah. the hustle who is, is more of a, has arrived. Yes. Yeah. So I've, seen, uh, I've seen that happen. What I've also seen is that um, the, there's, 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 a, there's, a bit, there's a bit more uh, high productivity when people are relaxed, mm-hmm. when people are informally dressed. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. I also experienced that. Mm-hmm. You feel the environment is a bit, is, is more open, more, mm-hmm. less rigid. Yeah. And so you feel that you enjoy the job. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's getting there. That's really interesting. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm curious about, mm. I mean, if you're talking about like saying, meeting a lot of key investors and they're in t-shirts and rather in, and dressed rather informally, yes. what the um, sort of difference is or where the mind shift changes mm. where if I'm going to meet a CEO and I'm dressed, Informally, your mm. first impression might be, might be, oh, this person's not taking this meeting seriously, or is mm. not taking this, whatever we're doing seriously. But mm. if it's a person at a certain level, mm. then it's fine for them to be able to wear, you know, informally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, where does that shift happen? <coughs> I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, I think, first of all, I think it's very, it's still a very African mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're still stuck in that historical uh, formal dressing stuff. Yeah. Uh, one time I went to meet JP Morgan. Okay. In, in the in, in the UK, mm-hmm. and we arrived there uh, on a road show. We were fully suited mm-hmm. in three piece and ties and everything. Right. And we met these two chaps uh, who are controlling almost uh, three trillion shillings mm-hmm. in in, in uh, uh, as part of their portfolio. Yeah. And they're so informal. No ties. No 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 suits. Yeah. And we were like, "Oops, have we overdressed?" <laughs> and they're like, "Oh yeah, no no no, feel free, guys, relax." Mm. Uh, you, and you can see they're relaxed. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the way they're talking to you is mm-hmm. like, there's no pressure. Yeah. As we are there, we're stiff with a heavy suitcase and presentations. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a, it's, 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 we, we, it's, it's becoming very different mm-hmm. uh, going forward. I think the, the more successful you become, the more relaxed you become. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, I mean, what else, what else do you have to prove? Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else to prove. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I've got it. Yeah. So what do I need to Everybody should respond to me on how I move. Look at the the big guys, the okay. Zuckerbergs, the, yeah. uh, what's it, Bill Gates. Yeah, it's so informal. I mean, but, and people, you know, respect them. So I think the more you have, the more you can dictate what you want to do. And that's, that's really interesting. The trend. Yeah. I mean, and I'm like, okay, so for us who have less, we still have to, <laughs> we still, have, we still have things to prove. So we oh, need to yes, dress. <laughs> yes, yes. You come from a meeting, you're gonna have a suit and go back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's 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 uh, anyway. It's it's a weird paradox, I yeah. guess. I, I tell you, this, yeah. Just one last one. Yeah. So we had this um, tech uh, uh, event. Okay. Uh, I was told dress down. Down. Yeah. So I dressed down, sneakers, t-shirts, mm-hmm. easy jacket, etc. The the clients dressed up mm. because we're coming to meet the CEO of the NSC. Yeah. And I'm like, why are you opposite? 
Yeah. You know, so my chairman, he, dressed, he says, I dressed in the middle. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so this, it's a perception issue. It's, yeah. still, it's still very African. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess, anyway, I guess I'll leave it to society to, you know, try and, try and figure it out uh, as we uh, move forward. Um, so I guess let me get into it, into, into your money journey, right? Yeah. Um, when did you um, realize that money makes the world go round? Um, in your in your personal experience, whether it was as you're growing up, whether it was as an adult, when did you realize money mm. is sort of money makes the world go round? Right. So um, <clears throat> my interest in money started when I was doing my A levels, mm -hmm. uh, form six, five and six, uh, and I I used to go bank money for my dad mm -hmm. at uh, then uh, Commercial Bank of Africa, mm -hmm. and I would meet tellers and the people work in the banks and. I was always fascinated how uh -huh. money moves, you know, the, uh -huh. the, the ching and the, the way they count the uh -huh. money. And, and, I, and I just saw that this, this, this currency is a very important commodity. Everything, because you rush, you were told, bank this, bank that, talk uh -huh. to the manager. And everybody was so smartly dressed. The premises are beautiful. Uh -huh. You're offered so much courtesy. Uh -huh. And I said, this must be the key thing. Yeah. This must be what drives everything. Yeah. So I told myself I wanted to be a banker. Yeah. In fact, I wanted to be a teller. That's what to, That's, to actually deal with the actual yeah, to cash. The commodity. Yeah, because it was just a fascinating experience. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, and so so working with that, and of course I was doing economics mm -hmm. in my uh, A levels, and I went on to do it in university as well. And everything is about economy mm -hmm. from the word economics. Mm -hmm. Everything it's a demand supply issue. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing that revolves without the economy. Yeah. So I said this must be a very important science. Why yeah. don't I consider doing it? Yeah. At the end of the day, I'll control you all. Yeah. And that's what happens. <laughs> so um, yeah, so so I realize it's a very important aspect of it. Um, the the economy is very fascinating. Mm -hmm. the, the the subject is very interesting, and um, I mean I, I've I've gone into different spheres of it, and I I can't tell you. Yeah. Um, without without financial services. Yeah. There's really nothing happening in the world. Yeah, we could it controls the world. Yeah, when it crashes, you crash. Yeah, when it rises, you rise. Right now, we're experiencing a, a good time because the dollar is doing well. Mm -hmm. What is that? Money. Yeah, when the dollar was too expensive again, what was happening? Everybody was sort of depressed. Everything right. was slowing down in the country. Right. So yeah, so that's that's how we interacted. So form six for me was a was a turning was it, point. Was a turning point. And right. That informed my career choice. And then my first investment uh, experience was in '96 when I put my money in Kenya Airways, mm -hmm. then a blue chip company, mm -hmm. still a blue chip company, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and man, and yeah. made some money. Yeah, and I realized, wow, this is an interesting life. Okay, and it's been uh, that since. Okay, yeah. I want to ask you. I mean, because you've, I guess, worked in the financial industry for th thirty-one years, like you said. Mm. Um, in your experience, in that sense, when have you seen? money move something you know where i guess if if you are a, as a layman it would be that would be really difficult to achieve or that'd be really difficult to yeah for someone to be able to do but money becomes the solution and it you know very yeah. quickly removes the roadblocks that are there a story that you can give us yeah so um in 206 mm -hmm. um i was sitting in my office on a friday extremely broke mm -hmm. it's raining out there mm -hmm. nowhere to go because i have no money yeah and ask myself, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a trader and I'm an investment manager or investment uh, uh, manager then. How come I'm not making money for myself? <laughs> so I said, no, I must look at the stock sheet again. I must look for the gap. Uh -huh. I must look for which, which stock will make me a millionaire. Yeah. This is, a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a Damascus moment for me then. Yeah. So I sit and I look at the worksheet and I look and I see one company that's been lying very quiet. I say, well, what's, what's happening? What does this company do? So I said, oh, yeah. So the company was this African Cables. And I said, mm -hmm. and Kibaki had come in and there was all this boon about construction. Mm -hmm. I said, all these houses will need cables, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, so let's figure it out. So I open, I see, oops, there's been a new acquisition. Mm -hmm. the, the former uh, shareholders have sold out a block mm -hmm. to a new team of people. Mm -hmm. And this new team happened to be a group called Transcentury. Mm -hmm. I said, who are Transcentury? I open them up again. I see, oops, I see some... Some interesting chaps, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, they must be knowing something here. Yeah. Construction, with a bit of that, putting those together, I decided these are stock to buy. Mm -hmm. Then to study shillings. Mm -hmm. So I got a couple of my friends and we put in some three million shillings. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, a good chunk of shares. Two weeks after that, it crashed to 11. 
And my friends thought I was crazy. Yeah. Told me, what the hell did you put the money into? What is all this? <laughs> yeah. But you're an expert. Yeah. And I said, guys, can you just let's give it let's time. Rest. Because at that point, you'd lost 20, 20 shillings. 20 shillings down. on each yeah, on each stock. On right? Each stock right? Yeah. And a, a month later, it, it recovered to 30. Mm-hmm. And then a small bull run began in the market. Mm-hmm. And this stock rallied to 19 uh, in a month. Mm-hmm. And my guys thought I was a genius. I said, guy, can we exit? Yeah. I said, no. Not yet. The party is still on. No. <laughs> and we went on and on. Yeah. It had 150. We started getting jitters. It turned to 300. I was also like 10 times. Come on, guys. Shoot we? Yeah. We held on. We were brave. Yeah. We exited at 600. Wow. 20 times. Wow. How, long, said, how, how long was that period? Uh, I think it was three months. It was uh, not more than three months because it was going up 10% per day. Eventually, we exited at 600, and we ran for the hills. <laughs> Take the money and don't and bring run. it back. Yeah. We took it off. Some went to land. We went to buy land. Some guy went to buy apartments. So that was a real move, you know? I said, yeah. Wow. Um, you know? Yeah, that's, that's um, in three months. In three months. How many in times, months. I mean, in your career, how many times can you see um, um, instances like those? How many times has something like that happen? It's... Uh, that was very that was phenomenal because that's a time we had a lot of IPOs and, and mm-hmm. a lot of pressure money coming in. People mm-hmm. were excited about the market. Mm-hmm. So I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen anything like that since since then. Mm-hmm. What we've seen are certain spikes and then deep spikes and deep, but mm-hmm. nothing with the bull run that we saw in the two thousand six, two thousand eight era. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. Uh it will happen. Yeah. Um so I think it's uh yeah, so so it's it's so it's, it makes mu- it makes sense. I mean, your friends must have been. Do they ad- adore you to date? Oh, <laughs> I'm still a hero in their eyes, man. They live in their houses, which I, which I, I am sure they want to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is in, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. That so, is, some, so money yeah. can make a difference. In yeah. fact, um, we always say that uh, you know, um, there's a saying mm-hmm. in Wall Street mm-hmm. it says, um, "Make money when there's blood in the streets." Mm-hmm. So we've come from a very bear run, mm-hmm. you know, where nobody wanted to touch the market. Yeah. But see what has happened in just two weeks mm-hmm. when, when the banks were releasing results. Mm-hmm. Stocks like Safaricom have moved from 13 to 8, 19, mm-hmm. you know, started chartered from 160 to 200. Mm-hmm. Now look at those gains happening in just two and a half weeks. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's phenomenal, right? Yeah. But how many still see it as a, that, you know, people, you know, there's a, there's, that disconnect yeah. I never really get. Right? Yeah. People, people don't like making money because it's there. <laughs> I mean, it's there. You're told invest when it's yeah. low, sell when it's high. Yeah, it, it's, it's that simple. It's, but, it's simple. but let me ask you, right? So for even this talk that you've told us that went from 30 to, to, to 600, I mean, when it's getting to 90, when it's getting to 100, when it's getting to 150, yes. I mean, wh- what's the thinking around, oh, this is tomorrow we might wake up and it's at 10, or you know how do how do how do you know when to hold on? And even when you exited at six hundred, did it continue to go up, or yeah. was that the max? It went to nine thousand. Nine thousand. No, a thousand. Oh, a thousand. thousand and then. So there was another. F- so and, and do you feel like oh man, we there's four hundred bob we've left on the table. You were just content. Said you never know. You yeah, know, you know you can never tell. That was good. Uh, it, was uh, very yeah. sp- it was a speculative run. Yeah, it makes a bit of sense. Yeah. So you, you've got a good question. Yeah. So m- for me, the rule of thumb is that anytime you're twenty five percent up. Just cream off a bit of it, uh-huh. yeah, so that you never regret, because uh-huh. you never know when the peak is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can never know. That was a risk we took. Yeah, but we were young. Yeah, we could afford it. We, we were young, we're brave. We could we could try a bit of that. I was yeah. telling I was telling your colleague before she walked in. Yeah. Uh, can I do it now? Yeah. I think my heart can stand the risk. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I'm your leg. I g- g- give, oh, give me my I'm, money. Uh, 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 I, I see the risks in yeah. a different way. Yeah. yeah. But to anything above twenty five percent is a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. If I if I buy today twenty five percent up, nothing to regret about. Okay. Which which investment gives you that kind of return? Yeah, and and you know, remember talking about three months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's incredible. That's incredible. Mm. Okay. Yeah. What what informed your the way that you? Um, handle your finances and how you mm. break down your expenses, I guess what you're paying for um, um, when, when you were paying fees for the girls, what, mm. what informs or what informed your personal management of money? Yeah. So for me, I think everything is about a budgeting process. Mm-hmm. And just the way you budget for a company, you should also budget for your own finances. Mm-hmm. So uh, back, back in the day, I developed a very good template. Mm-hmm. It had the worksheets that showed me my accounts, it mm-hmm. showed me my 
projections. Mm-hmm. It showed me my um, uh, uh, future investments. Mm-hmm. And I've kept that worksheet to date. Mm-hmm. So every time I know how much of my salary comes in, mm-hmm. what goes into my expenses, what's the residue after that, I, I can even see my projections month on month to the end of the year mm-hmm. on how the incomes will be. Just, just assumptions, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so that's kept me on track mm-hmm. uh, to avoid also going over, over indulging. Yeah. And then the other thing I do is I do a lot of my investments are checked off at at at, at the salary level. Okay. So my house loans, my co- savings to SACO mm-hmm. savings, I, I tell my employer check it off because mm-hmm. I can't keep money in my account. Mm-hmm. There's something mm-hmm. about money in my and account finding... that you know shows me. <laughs> yeah. I can spend. Yeah. So I like spending the residue, whatever has been sent after yeah. all those things. So, I mean, if you can share with us, how much is your, is in your, what, what's it called? It's called a checking, the regu- like your regular account. What's so, the maximum amount of money you keep in your regular account? Uh, my salaries don't meet. They don't meet? They can't meet. If they meet, there's a problem. You're not, efficient. You're not money, investing your money efficiently. Yeah. If your Last month's salary should not meet this month's salary. Why yeah. should they meet? Yeah. Invest it, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I clear my account. Yeah. Month. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't keep any, any, any residue. So you're investing, then you're paying expenses, then. Uh, yes. End of the month when I know the other salary is coming, yeah. this one must be cleared off. Yeah. Yeah. If, if there's something else, put it in a call account or, or something. But yeah. No, let me ask you. Yeah. How much money do you have in your M-Pesa? Right now. Yeah. You have some money in your M-Pesa. I do. Why are you keeping it there? No, no, I mean, uh, because literally paying a bill, I ha- right now, no, as we speak, that. I have a thousand, I have a thousand shillings on my M-Pesa. Okay, that's a bit efficient. But most Kenyans <laughs> yeah. keep a lot of money in the M-Pesa lying idle or in their current accounts. Yeah. Lying idle. What does that money do? But what about your emergency fund? Or, or where do you keep your, your money for your emergencies? You have any, okay, you have a savings account. Yeah. And, and, and not even a savings account. You, you have a call account. Okay. Always try and keep your money in something that earns it money. Yeah. You know, every time you put money somewhere, it's adding interest. Yeah. It's the same way when you leave it in the current account, the bank is adding interest. Yeah. On zero, zero interest balances. Yeah. Which constitutes almost 45, 40% of, of total balances in, in banks today. Yeah. Are people who keep money idle. And they're trading with it. Yeah. People should learn to sweep this money into investments. Yeah. So tell your bank, no, put, put my money in a savings account or put it in a call account. Mm. Don't put my money in a current account. Yeah. It's your money. You know? And a call account can be called anytime. Yeah. Yeah, for emergencies. But if your salaries meet, mm-hmm. you're not efficient in your investments. Yeah. They should never meet. Yeah. You should find a clean balance. <laughs> Zero account. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> that is very interesting. I, I... In fact, my most troublesome time... Yeah. Is end of the month. End of the month is when I get most stress. Why? Why? There are checkoffs. There are payments to be made. You must look for other payments to top up to clear. Yeah. I love middle of the month. Yeah. There are no crisis mm-hmm. times. Crisis times end of the month because investments are shaking you all over the place. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Question: Because I guess because of the position that you had, um, I mean, the, the, your, your salary was talked about publicly. People knew how much yeah, you're. Man. Yeah, <laughs> oh it's depressing, right? How much? It's, so it's, 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 it's not. I think it's. Did you, see the, did you see the top salaries in this country? I mean, I've seen. I mean, I've seen some of the the the, 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 Moria's, the, the, um, oh, the cent terms. Anyway, those I've seen them. But yours, I mean, wasn't it's, depressing. It's it's, it's like, you know, the second half of the league table. <laughs> <right? Yeah. laughs> right. But anyway, so because I believe it's like two point something, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, mm, right? Or there about. Um, 2.1, what, I mean, what is it like, first of all, to know that, I mean, everyone knows what your, what your salary is and therefore I can sit here and so I, I mean, I, like, I didn't see what car you drove in, but I can see the car that you're driving and begin to make judgment calls on how you're spending your money. And even, you know, we talk about black tax in, in, in the African community. I mean, if I'm calling you to ask you for money, you're like, I don't have money. I'm like, really? Yeah. Do you really not have money? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh. Being a public listed company and getting your salaries disclosed, yeah. it's it's, uh, it's a bit of a challenge because mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> you can never tell anybody you don't have the money. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember one time going home and uh, my wife was like, "You're earning that much," and I'm like, "This much? It's not much." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look at what the rest are earning. Uh, look yeah. at all these uh, huge, yeah. huge salaries. Yeah. But 
may as it be, I mean, we, we kind of got used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but of course, it does. It doesn't present a challenge. People think you can res- you you can't you can't deny that you don't have the money. Mm-hmm. Yet yet they don't know what what expenses you have on this side. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, money will always find a use for itself. Mm-hmm. You'll never. The more you earn, the more the more you spend. Yeah, I mean, the more you desire. So you want you earning a million shillings. You want to buy a better car, you mm-hmm. want to buy a better house, mm-hmm. better things. So, so the, the expenditure also increases. So, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it sort of balances off, mm-hmm. you know, because you also want to improve your status or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, so it's a sort of sense uh, a perception that uh, that you have it. Because imagine if I was earning two million shillings and I came in a bit, mm-hmm. you'd really think I'm a very you know mean guy, huh? I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, they talk about, and, and I don't know, and, and I'm going to get the country wrong, but I know that this president in, in a South American country mm. who drives like a VW, uh, mm. like a Beetle, and lives in like a very small house and donates his salary to, to charity and stuff like that. So I wonder, like, do, did you feel pressure, and, and do you feel pressure because of the position that you had, yeah, mm. to drive a certain car, to wear a certain watch, to wear a certain suit, um, and to be seen living in a certain place? Mm. And how difficult is it to... If that wasn't who you were, to stay true to being, I don't, I don't even know if the word is frugal, but just spend your money differently. Yeah, I think the, the challenge you have is that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a society expectation mm-hmm. of you. That uh, when you're going to be the CEO of the exchange, <coughs> there's a certain way that you carry yourself. There's mm-hmm. a certain car that you drive. There's a certain, um, how, there's certain places you should go to. Mm-hmm. It's a society expectation. Mm-hmm. So you have to match to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always been like, oops, the see of the exchange was seen in a in a bit. Mm-hmm. They're like, eh, the exchange must be struggling, eh? Mm. So this that society expectation creates a bit of a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So so th- so that's that's really the that's really the case. Um, yeah. But I think we all try to tra- stay true to ourselves. Uh, it's not like I started at the top. I mm-hmm. mean, I started my my life in a one bedroom house. Mm-hmm. I, I went very systematically. Okay. One bedroom, uh-huh. one child. Two bedrooms, two children. Three bedrooms, three kids. Uh-huh. And then moving on, you know, from this side of town, this side of town, because the schools are on this side of town, uh-huh. eventually building my own house. Uh-huh. So it was very systematic progress because you also want to see how you're moving on. Uh-huh. Yeah, so so I think you just stay true to yourself, uh-huh. only that now there's, you've got to make some adjustments based on what the, what the role carries. Yeah. Did you feel like any of your employees or anyone who was working under you sort of critiqued you or criticized you for what you were making? Because, you know, you, you, there are these certain work environments where people are like, oh, you know, so-and-so is being paid a lot of money and we are the ones who do all the work. Um, <laughs> did you feel like you were good value for the money that you were being paid? And obviously this is a difficult <laughs> question to ask and it's subjective to answer, but did you feel like you were good value for the salary that you were, you were, you were making? Of course I was good value. Um, <laughs> I think the, and, and why, how you make them appreciate it mm-hmm. is they, they go to see the kind of, ta- the, the kind of role you play, the kind of t- the job you do, mm-hmm. the kind of pressure you face. Mm-hmm. And what I always do is that I carry uh, my colleagues to my meetings, mm-hmm. to, my, to my presentations, to all these speeches that, for them to appreciate what this job is all about. Mm-hmm. It's not just a job that you're sitting in a comfort zone. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with very delicate matters. You're dealing with very sensitive people. Mm-hmm. You're, you're managing so they see the they see the kind of pressure you face yeah and i've challenged them i told them anybody wants to sit on this seat they say oh hell no yeah the, the job is looking crazy yeah you know markets are depressed you get a video call you know your people are calling you you're on the papers every day you're being you know so they say hey this job is hectic yeah so they kind of appreciate yeah and say no 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 that it, <laughs> it's worth its price yeah you just sit there and uh, and you deal with it so and also i think what it does it motivates you mm-hmm. yeah for those who Take it positively, they get motivated to try and to try for the job. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, when I left, um, most of my colleagues applied for the role. Mm-hmm. I was so impressed mm-hmm. that oops, yeah, they could actually think about becoming CEO. Yeah, and they, yeah, I was so impressed that they did. You know, so it shows you there's they, they they kind of aspire to it. Okay, it's very inspirational in a way. I think when you look at when you look at um, first of all, let me just qualify the point that. Mm-hmm. That of course, yes, it, it, it does rank among high-paid people mm-hmm. in the country, which is okay. Uh, but I think given the, given the, the continuous um, importance of the role mm-hmm. and, and people appreciation and, and the strategic importance of where it sits mm-hmm. and benchmarking on the sector that Global we operate in, yeah. 
then I think you'd like to say, oops, I think it should actually be closer mm. to what the upper middle middle quartile is doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in the financial services sector. You see the public salaries of the CEOs. Yeah. It's a huge yeah. figure, right? Yeah. And so we are still we still lag behind compared to the financial services yeah. itself. So so you want, always want to say it should be closer to that. Okay. Uh, and, and there has to be an, an appreciation for it. Yeah. Because I think uh, working as the CEO of the exchange is a very, very high-pressure job. Mm -hmm. And it needs somebody who can withstand that pressure, mm -hmm. and very committed, and, and they has a drive to do it. Yeah. And it's a lot of moving parts. You know, you're, it's a national infrastructure. Every day you're in the papers. Every day people are talking about you. So you see. So it's a, it requires adequate compensation. So okay. I think it should get there. Okay. I want to talk about because um, you, you you talk about being very systematic and you know one child one one bedroom to, <laughs> and so I want to talk about how you built your wealth right how you built your wealth or your worth in the fin financial um, industry right what are the things that you were doing at these different levels at the levels that you consider okay here I moved from level one to level two and I moved from level two to level three whatever those benchmarks were for you in your mind what are the things that you were doing at each of those levels that allowed you to grow into the next role that you um, were then, I guess, playing in, in the financial space. Yeah. We can start at, I guess, the one, one bedroom, <laughs> one child stage. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so I think the, um, I mean, I'll just say back in um, 1998, mm -hmm. I was turning 30 mm -hmm. and I asked myself, how long does it take to pay a mortgage? Mm -hmm. I said, wow, it takes not less than, for you to actually, that time the retirement age was 55. Mm -hmm. So I said, it'll take yep, me 25 minutes. years to pay for this one house. Yeah. So I said, wow. So I'll retire with one house. If I pay it every month slowly. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, okay, what you do? Uh, instead of procrastinating, mm -hmm. buy the house. Mm -hmm. Start the journey. Mm -hmm. So I, fortunately, I got into a bank and I got a mortgage and I bought my first house. Mm -hmm. All right. In the middle of that, um, a couple of years after that, mm -hmm. I told myself, no, no, no. You, you can't leave. You can't retire with one house. Yeah. Accelerate this. Mm -hmm. So I accelerated my mortgage. Mm -hmm. And I started paying almost one and a half times, two times, mm -hmm. get my bonus, accelerate it. Mm -hmm. So in another three, four years, I was almost at 80% down payment. You know, mm -hmm. the trick with mortgage is that if you pay it month on month, mm -hmm. you're paying more interest than principal. Mm -hmm. But if you double the payment, the extra amount goes to your principal. Mm -hmm. So it reduces it faster. Yeah. So at three years later, I could buy a second house. Mm -hmm. Uh, then went to a circle now because uh -huh. I had not finished this one from the bank. Uh -huh. Went and took another one and bought another house. Uh -huh. And then that and that started giving me encouragement. And I also had a lot of friends and mentors who tell me, yeah, let's, there's a plot here. Let's put, put some money here. Right. And you stretch yourself. Right. <clears throat> In fact, one of my former CEOs uh, was, very, was very instrumental. He kept telling me, Jeff, stretch your salary. Every time you get an increment, take a loan. You work for a bank. Stretch. So I never used to enjoy the money. Yeah. Every increment, I take another loan. You sort of front load, you load, you load. <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah. that's what I'm telling you, my salary is never used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that helps. So the real estate was for me was a very was a good beginning. That's yeah. when I started it's really investing in real estate. Yeah. But parallel to that, of course, being somebody in the financial services sector and in the equity markets mm -hmm. became an interesting path as mm -hmm. well. So I buying into stocks, taking some positions there, here and there, here and there, bonds as well. Mm -hmm. So the whole universe. So, um, as you, it, it's, it's a real sacrifice, but uh -huh. I can tell you, you, you sacrifice good opportunities, you sacrifice travel, holidays, uh -huh. fun, uh -huh. and you have got a young family. It's, it's, it's a real sacrifice. Uh -huh. so it was always squeezing yourself, uh -huh. squeezing yourself. And um, uh, at some point, because the way I look at it, uh, and this, came, this was an interesting <laughs> mantra from a wise man that be, between 30 and 40, uh -huh. or 30 and 45, uh -huh. is called acquisition. Uh -huh. 45 to 60 is consolidation. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if, you're, if you're acquiring from 45, when are you going to consolidate? Yeah. When you're 70? Yeah. When are you going to start having fun? Yeah. Yeah. So I think those are the two. You break that into two. And mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, 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 when, that's what became my, my, my path to investment. Right. Um, do I think I've, I've done it? No. Mm -hmm. You still feel something is not happening. Mm -hmm. Your dreams, yeah? Mm -hmm. Somebody said, if your dreams don't scare you, yeah, they're not serious. It's a dreams, problem. Right? Yeah, they're not serious. Your dreams must scare you, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so okay. Kind of 
So I mean that's that's really interesting and I think some good um something for me to I mean I'm in my I'm in between that 30 to 30 to 45 acquisition phase, phase. <laughs> acquisition phase and I'm hearing about you taking a mortgage at 30 and and trying to figure um how you're paying that out <clears throat> and every time you're getting a bonus you're you know getting another loan I guess does the the fact that you are employed and have mm. sort of that job security I mean how much did that contribute to um your ability wow. to make more money mm. and then vis-a-vis -vis maybe some of your friends or colleagues who are in entrepreneurship who potentially i don't know obviously but potentially were making either more or less money than than you are at the time and specifically for people who potentially were making more money mm. what was uh, did you have any reflections you know at that point if you're buying if you are getting a mortgage at 30 and you're looking at your entrepreneurs at 30 and they are you know i know um, um sort of further down that journey mm. um what was that like for you you know, sometimes you want to ask the question, did I make the wrong move? Yeah. Because I've seen entrepreneur friends of mine who have, oh, have gone way, way, way beyond. Yeah. And, and they're doing extremely well. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's a decision point you make, whether mm -hmm. you want to work or whether you want to be entrepreneur. I think either way it works. Mm -hmm. You could still be very well invested, very well uh, you designed your portfolio mm -hmm. over time very well, mm -hmm. no matter which way you go. I think mm -hmm. money is money. Mm -hmm. It's just about the discipline. You could be employed, mm -hmm. but very poor discipline, mm -hmm. and you don't invest, or too, too much fear mm -hmm. that you don't invest. In fact, I think people in entrepreneurship are more courageous mm -hmm. because they're running their own businesses, which they've, they've set up, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they, they can take risks. Their risk appetite is much better. So I think either path works, depends on what your own um, risk appetite is at some point. Let me, let me tell you, the younger you are, mm -hmm you should have a higher risk appetite. Mm -hmm. You will not acquire things if you're not, if you don't have the, the ability to appreciate risk. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can slow down as you age. Because if you start acquiring things at mm -hmm. 40, you will be so scared. You know, you want to go for very safe, safe assets. You mm -hmm. to, you to, but he's, at this stage, yeah. you could buy a plot somewhere and then one day a road comes and opens <laughs> up the... <laughs> Opens up that place and you're a billionaire, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or, the, or oil is found somewhere, yeah. you know? Yeah. So all those balancing yeah. things. Are very, yeah, the earlier you can do it, the better. Okay. I mean, uh, but I want to talk you have about... time to make mistakes. I, 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 I understand that. I want to ask about the, the risk element vis-a-vis -vis, um, stretching, your, stretching, stretching your salary, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, how practical... Is it? I mean, when you're paying bills, when you're taking care of your girls and your family and, 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 and you know, all of that, how, what, what's the actual day-to-day -day living situation of saying stretch your salary? When you're saying you've taken two mortgages, um, are there situations where you don't have money um, to, to fuel your car? You don't have money to, you know, to know where the next X payment is going to come from? And how do you deal with those situations? How did you deal with those situations? So I think first, the first thing is that in your budgeting, in your yeah. budget, take care of the necessities. Eh? Yeah. Cover your cover your basics, cover your school fees, cover all this. Just have them, the basics. Yeah. And then anything else then goes into your investment side. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so 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 for instance, if you're earning X, suddenly you get an increment in your salary. You don't change your life. Mm -hmm. Keep it keep it steady. Mm -hmm. And then of course just maybe you can improve it a bit. Mm -hmm. One one extra holiday. Mm -hmm. But anything above that, push it into an investment. Mm -hmm. And just have a commitment with your spouse that it's early years, we have to. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, if you if you if you just if if you want to change your living style, yeah, then that's another reason you you won't invest. Yeah. But just try to stay focused on the on on on, on what you're used to, mm -hmm. and then let anything extra go into it. And that's why for me, checking it off was easier. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that extra salary? No, that one. It's not even there. Yeah. It's not even there. It's not even there. Yeah. So let's keep this part. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Right. Right. Because it's very easy. Yeah. For. To, to get that extra amount of money and to change something. Yeah. Consumption is a very tricky thing. Yeah. I mean, that's when you want to buy a 75-inch TV. Mm -hmm. You want to put a few more sounds, you know, etc. It's so right. easy to fall into that trap. Right. But if you can check it off, it makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. Okay. I have two final questions as we wind up, right? Um, at what point in, in, in your life, um, or let me actually ask you before I ask you that, mm -hmm. what's, what made you most money? Was it your salary? Or your investment? What's made you the most money in your in your life? Wow, it's an interesting one. Um, okay, I'd say I'd say for now it's still the salary. Okay, because now is when I've finished. I'm 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 hoping that my investments will take care of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
I think salary so far. Yeah, salary so far so salary is what's so far, made yeah, you so far, so the yeah. most money. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I haven't really churned my investments. I've okay. just been investing, investing, investing. Now. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And that's good because it leads up to my second question, which is, so then in the financial institution, like for anybody who is potentially in the financial space right now um, and just starting off or in the middle or whatever the case is, because there's only one in a CCU, right? There's no, it's not two, it's not three, it's not four. <laughs> there's only one position that's available there. I mean, what are the things that you did in your career that allowed you to stand out that even got you into the room um, for for you know, for those considerations and to be able to then make this amount of money that you've made as 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 you know where you can say yeah salary has made me most of my money so far mm. yeah i can tell you uh, how many kenyans do we have are we 50 55, 50, 55 million. million now yeah what are your chances of getting noticed yeah that's a very low probability yeah it? so it's about being it's about being bold huh? mm-hmm. Um, when I when I was in uh, when I was joining the bank, mm-hmm. one of my 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 objectives was to work uh, very closely with the top leadership mm-hmm. in, in of the bank in a, in a number of years. And I told myself whatever needs to be done needs to be done. Yeah. If I'm required, if if something is required of me in mm-hmm. my role, mm-hmm. I will do it so well mm-hmm. that I'll get noticed. Mm-hmm. And slowly, slowly, you become dependable. Mm-hmm. Oh. We need to do a division of strategic uh-huh. paper. Who can uh-huh. do it? Uh-huh. You stand out. I uh-huh. can do it. Uh-huh. You carry out your research. You call all your friends. Let's crack this thing. <laughs> then, then you become dependable. Yeah. Then you start getting more assigned into more roles. Into yeah. More roles. Eventually, you take over. And then, uh-huh. working to, on new opportunities. Uh-huh. I mean, I was in charge of setting up three companies uh-huh. in, in, the, in the bank uh-huh. that I was working for. They went, and then I was nominated to to go and sit on the board of the industry. Uh-huh. At the board of the industry, I got nominated to sit on the board of the uh-huh. NSC. And from the board of the NSC, I decided to become the CEO. Uh-huh. Now, if you do not take those opportunities, if you're not bold enough to uh-huh. stand out of the crowd, uh-huh. then who will notice you? Uh-huh. It's so important to stand out. Uh-huh. Be bold. I mean, you only have one life. It's your life anyway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if guys criticize you, do you care? <laughs> <laughs> that's my life, yeah. <laughs> Don't be shy of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's what for me counts. Yeah, and just determination to do it. Yeah, and also just have the right skill set, and so that nobody questions it. When yeah, the time for decisions making comes, they don't question your skills. Yeah. You are ready. You yeah. have everything. Only that now you're you're a bit more. You stand out more. Yeah, that's what counts. Interesting. What does hard work mean for you? And and I, I mean this from the perspective of you know, like you 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 watch TED talks or hear people and people say, yeah, work hard. Mm. You know, you know, succeed, work hard, and you know, be patient, and all of those things, and everything will come. But what does working hard? When what did working hard actually mean for you? Did it mean um, you're in the office until nine p.m.? Did it mean sacrificing time with your family? Yeah. Did it mean waking up really early? Like, what does working hard actually mean? And 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 trying to ensure that you stand out. For me, working hard is a very innate thing. It's something that you you have I embraced very early. Mm-hmm. I had a boss who one time told me, uh, "Do you know? Have you heard of anybody who died of what? He was, he's in the eulogy. He was killed by work." <laughs> I told myself, "Okay, that's what it means." <laughs> eh? And so yeah. I I got used to pressure early. Yeah. And I told my boy, uh, "Whatever needs to be done needs to be done." So yeah. I was an early bird, a late worker. Yeah. Continuously for the last thirty-one years. Yeah. I've never I've, I've never I've never been late for work mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. I've always tried, unless I'm unwell. Yeah. But that's working hard for me showed, showed me results early. Mm-hmm. So for me, it, was, it has never been a challenge at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hard work pays. Yeah. That's true. It pays. You see, you see, you see recognition, you see growth, and you see progress. It yeah. pays. Yeah. So for me, working hard that was something I embodied very early. Yeah. And I can withstand, I with, can withstand any so sort of pressure. Okay. Yeah. In fact, uh, when faced with a crisis, mm-hmm. I I do my best and I say, okay, let every, the rest just take care of itself. Yeah, and and things just get resolved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. My last question for today, for this fantastic conversation that I've truly enjoyed, <laughs> and this I I I I said I wanted to ask the minute I saw this article, the article that was published around the NSC being the the worst performing um, market um, in, in, in the, I think it was in Africa at the time. Nobody will ever forget that, gosh. <laughs> My question for you, though, is what was that morning like for you? Like when you wake up that morning and you see that article published, 
what does it do for you psychologically, mentally, emotionally? You know, what like yeah, what what does it do for you? Yeah, so I got I got news about it at about ten o'clock in a meeting when mm-hmm. I was in a meeting, and my colleague says, "Have you seen this?" And I was like, "Oh, okay." Somebody is Bloomberg is at it again. Mm-hmm. It's not the first time they've written that, by the mm-hmm. way. Yeah. So I said, "Okay, fine. It's okay. It will go away." Yeah. Hey, it refused to go away because <laughs> I heard even in Bombers of Kenya it was being discussed by yeah. some politicians and everything. Yeah, that got that got to me. Mm-hmm. That got to me because. Um, <clears throat> You know, you know, in, you know, in my in my sort of job, mm-hmm. you're never given the right to, right of reply. Yeah. In time. Yeah. I mean, you you just get a story as hit you in the face, and yeah. that was a bit of a shaker. Uh, yeah. So I was a bit disappointed, of course, mm-hmm. because um, how many countries do we have in the world? How many exchanges do we have in the world? Yeah. What was the criteria of measure? Mm-hmm. Did they? Did they? The, what qualification did they give the whole thing? Yeah. So I questioned it. Mm-hmm. And we wrote back an article and pushed back on it and say, show us the parameters, show us the data. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to demonstrate ourselves. But it was too late. I mean, it had permeated. I even had a, a group of students who came in uh, for, a, for a student uh, class. Right. And they were like, why are you the worst exchange in the world? And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, it's this far. Yeah. So it was quite a damaging day. Yeah. Now, the other day, I saw the, uh, we were the best performing exchange yes. in Africa. How many can remember that? <laughs> you, could, you could even ask me that question. <laughs> we are now the best performing. Yeah. Markets move. Yeah. I mean, these are cyclic things. They, don't, they shouldn't be news. Yeah. They're cyclic. Yeah. Yeah. So, I felt it was just a bit of an excitement. So, how did you shake it off? Like, how do you shake it off and be like, yeah, you know, tomorrow is another day. You know, let's get at it. I've seen so many of those things. Yeah. One time I woke up and found a whole big two-page spread mm-hmm. of the, the the stock market is cheap. The tomatoes, mm-hmm. are more, uh, the stock market is cheaper than a, a tomato. Yeah. Some shares are cheaper than a tomato. Two-page yeah. on a Sunday. Draw in nice graphics, like pictures all over the place. And I was like, ah, what's on the next page? <laughs> So I've learned to shake it up. Yeah. I've learned to shake it up. I've now put it to heart. I take it positively. Yeah. I, I come, I encourage you to come and demonstrate. So I, I challenge the media. Yeah. Tell them, no, no, no. Let's let's talk about it. Yeah. 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 And uh, they get the point. Some, yeah. some get the point, some don't. Yeah. And but, but they, they, one time I, I questioned that worst exchange thing. In my clarification. Yeah. They even went and made it worse. So I just <laughs> <laughs> I just say okay, cool off. It's fine. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. Uh, there'll be another story tomorrow. You can't be the only story. In yeah. The world. yeah, yeah. You told it. You've told it. Yeah, yeah. But it did. It did cause a bit of damage because yeah. we lost a very good client mm. who wanted to list their shares on the exchange. Mm-hmm. That's kind of let me tell you that that was the most painful part. We had just done a meeting mm-hmm. and we were drawing a timetable mm-hmm. for a new company. To mm-hmm. come. That evening, the call me and told me, "Hey, this story. We think the timing is bad." Yeah. And I was like, "Come on, guys." can prove that this is not we are not the worst i can prove it. So we'll come next time yeah that's the kind of damage we faced and yeah it really really hurt us yeah oh gosh okay <laughs> sorry there's one more you'll forgive me one more one more i want to ask um how does the nsc make most of its money okay. i mean if you were to break down and say because i know i guess the i think that the new york series makes most of its money from the listings and the and the fees that they are charged there and then mm-hmm. there's the bonds and government stuff that they do and then there's advisory stuff that they do so if you like to break down their it's a business model. Mm-hmm. How uh, the NSC in Kenya? Because I think we have 60, Six, 62 companies. 62 companies listed. So how, how, how does the NSC make most of its money? So every time we trade, yeah. the NSC earns a levy. Yeah. Um, for shares, it's uh, 0.12% mm-hmm. of, the, of the value. Mm-hmm. So if you trade 100,000, so you get 0.12% of that. Okay. Then there's a listing. Okay, so that's the highest. Mm-hmm. That gives us about, that and bonds give us about... Um, Fifty percent of revenue. Okay, gives them. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. I'm not holding NSC's <laughs> brief now. Yeah, anymore. This is yeah. NSC. <laughs> so they get part of that. From yeah. The yeah. They also have listing fees, which gives them something. But this, so the number one is the trading revenue. Okay. Secondly is data. Yeah. They sell data. So all these price lists, uh, price prices mm-hmm. are monetized. Mm-hmm. There are people who buy them for purposes of cut, invest, look, structuring portfolios, etc. Yeah. So data is the second highest revenue yeah. stream. And then we have uh, treasury income and uh, and listing fees. Okay. Like that, yeah. 
Okay. Mm. That I wanted to know for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I know. Um, do you have a final thing you want to say to anybody who might be in the financial space, um, might want to have a fantastic career in the financial space, yeah. anything you might want to say to them um, to be able to achieve that for themselves? Yeah. yeah, I think it's important to... It's never too late to invest. So do not uh, regret that if you haven't started. Uh, when one bus passes, another one is coming. Mm -hmm. And it could be a bigger bus. Yeah. So always think of investing as a new, um, a new learning, yeah. and stay, stay, stay true to the course. Once you start investing, just continue investing, even if you get shocks. Yeah. Just say the next opportunity is coming. The next yeah. opportunity is coming. But also use professionals. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't go don't go thinking you know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, there are professionals who can help you, and let me tell you, it, having just like they say, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. You can't put all your investments in one in one in one asset. Diversify. Yeah. So have shares, have a property, have uh, bonds, have liquidity, so that you can always enjoy the benefits of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, but it's never too late. Warren Buffett started at eleven, and why? Why not you? Yeah. You know, it's never too late, and um, new millionaires will keep coming. New companies will keep coming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. That was this episode of Financially Incorrect. I hope you guys have learned a thing or two. I really enjoyed the conversation and we will see you guys on the next episode.